So a little bit of backstory for you guys. I started my fitness business in 2013. And when I started my fitness business, I was in an environment where there was a lot of basically, I would say, quote unquote, sharks in my area. And there was a lot of, I come from a bodybuilding background. So um, I was a fitness competitor myself. I had done four fitness competitions. And when in my area, when I started online coaching in my network, there was five to six to seven um, quote unquote high level coaches that had hundreds of clients. Uh, they were, you know, getting clients for crazy results. They were putting clients on stage. And then when I stepped into the space and I started online coaching for other people, I had little to no experience coaching other human beings. And so even though I wanted to step up and I wanted to basically become an online coach, it was almost like I didn't, it was almost like I felt like I didn't quite qualify. Um, I wanted to help other people and I had this passion for inspiring other people, but I almost felt like I didn't quite qualify and that I wasn't going to be capable of stepping up and owning this online coaching business because I didn't quite feel like I was ready internally, completely transparent. Um, I wanted to help other people, but I just didn't quite feel ready. I didn't feel like I had the certifications. I didn't feel like I had the right training knowledge. I didn't feel like I had the right nutrition knowledge. Um, and even though I had done five fitness competitions, I had my nutrition certification, I had my PT certification, on some level, I didn't quite feel qualified. I didn't quite feel ready. Um, but there was something inside of me that just told me that like, yo, like, you're never going to be ready. There's never going to be a right time. You should just start now, start small and work with what you have and what you can. And so my first ever client was $200 for a 12 week nutrition program. I worked with him basically to like help me get my first testimonial. And once I got you know, this client results, I signed another client, I got another client results. That's when my business started to get some traction. And here's the, here's the funny thing is when I first started building my fitness business and I started to get some more clients, it was almost like, even though it felt amazing to sign clients and it felt amazing to receive money for my coaching program and receive money for my service, I always had this underlying feeling, I this underlying guilt that somebody was going to come expose me as a fraud. I always had this like underlying um, a sense of I'm not actually qualified to be coaching other people and somebody's going to come find out and they're going to blast me online and they're going to expose me for the fraud that I am. I always had this feeling. And honestly, the feeling never really went away. And as I, you know, got more clients and clients got better results and it started to affirm to me that I actually knew what the fuck I was talking about. But as I progressed and I started to get more clients and more successful, there was a strong internal feeling that I was like, I'm going to be exposed as a fraud at some point or another. Somebody's going to blast me online. Somebody's going to expose me. Somebody's going to tell, come out there and say that I actually don't know what I'm talking about. And they're going to be right. Because for me, I actually felt like on some level that I wasn't quite ready. Um, crazy to actually say that out loud. I don't think I've ever admitted that out loud. Um, here's the funny thing is, um, when you're talking about a coaching program, let's talk about what a coaching program is, right? Because I think that when a lot of PTs want to start their coaching business, a lot of personal trainers, they want to start their coaching business. What they think about is they think about whether or not they have the right quote unquote on paper qualifications, right? So do I have the right nutrition background? Do I have the right training background? Do I have all of the paperwork in order so that I'm ready? Do I have enough experience in person training in order to be an online coach? Do I have all the right paperwork and frameworks and fundamentals ready? And don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not saying that that stuff isn't massively important, like having a solid foundation on your nutrition and your training and, you know, the basic training principles and nutrition principles. Um, but I'm also going to say at the exact same time, the entire time that I felt like I was a fraud, the entire time that I felt like I wasn't ready, the entire time that I felt like I wasn't capable, the entire, like there was other coaches in the exact same market as me that had more quote unquote qualifications that weren't half the coach that I was in terms of the amount that they communicated with their clients, the amount that they actually gave value to their clients, the amount that they were able to show up and deliver to their clients, the amount that they checked in with their clients when their clients were falling off track the actual coaching aspect that goes into helping somebody completely transform their life. And so the way that I use this feeling of this, this like 
almost this sense that somebody was looking over my shoulder and about to expose me the way that I use this to my advantage and the way that I want to give this to you guys um, as, as your advantage is this, when I felt like a fraud, when I felt like I wasn't ready, I use that as my internal temperature, my internal switch, my, my knob to turn up the amount of value that I gave to my clients to turn up the amount that I was willing to learn and to turn up the amount of intention that I put into my business. Because the funny thing about this is over the course of the last seven years, obviously that was in 2013 and now my business has transpired. Over the course of the last seven years, when I look back on a lot of the people that I was in the exact same coaching market as in, uh, in the city that I was born in, a lot of them are still doing good, but they haven't progressed and excelled the way that I have. And that's not because they didn't have the right on paper qualifications, but it's because they didn't approach their business with the same mindset that I did. And the mindset that I had around business is yes, certifications are important. You should, you know, have some sort of background or even base level knowledge. When I first started coaching people uh, online, I didn't actually have my nutrition certification, but I was, I'd been working out for seven years. I had done four fitness competitions. I knew what I was talking about and I was able to give people that knowledge. So that's important. Training fundamental, like it's fundamental understanding of how training works is important. But the most important act, aspect of your business is how do you show up for your fucking clients? How do you show up for the people that are paying you money? If somebody invests, you know, $750 in a 12 week program with you, are you just taking their money and giving them a training and nutrition program and hoping that they follow it? Or are you actually guiding them and holding them accountable to the process? Are you making it easy for them to understand? If they don't understand how to use this training and nutrition protocol, are you making adjustments so that they can make changes? Are you coaching them through the process? Are you teaching them sustainable, healthy lifestyle habits? Or are you just expecting that they they fit into your mold of what a coaching program should be? Like you deliver a box and if they're a circle, you're just trying to jam the circle into the box without understanding that like every single client is different and you have to be willing to like meet those clients where they're at. So for me, I understood, like I actually never admitted to myself that I had this fear of being exposed as a fraud because I didn't want my clients to find out that I thought I was going to get exposed as a fraud. I didn't want other people to find out. And so I always had this like fear in the back of my mind that somebody was going to come expose me for the fraud that I was. And I think that's actually why, by the way, let's talk about this for a second. I think that's actually why I was so sensitive to haters at first, because back in the day when somebody would, you know, comment, hate shit on my post, I would get super offended or I'd get super triggered or I'd get super upset or it would aff affect me. And I think the reason that it affected me is because I actually thought that I was a fraud in the back of my mind unconsciously. And so when somebody actually said it to me out loud, it like made me aware of what I was thinking inside, but I, I was actually burying deep down. And so it was like, that's why it would affect me so much is because that's what I was already thinking to myself. Otherwise I wouldn't have been affected by somebody when they said something negative about me. So the fear of being exposed as a fraud. How do we get over this? How do we step into this? What do we need to do to overcome this? How do we live with this and still grow a coaching business? This is something that everybody needs to understand. You don't need to, ha you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. You have to start somewhere. It's, it's funny because the catch 22 is that, you know, if you go to, as an example, at like a lot of jobs, like a lot of high level jobs, we're not talking about jobs here, but I'm going to use it as an example. If you want to get a, like a high level job, like at a high level position, a lot of those positions require that you have experience, but the only way to get experience is to get those positions. So it's almost like they want the, the cart before the horse. And so in your coaching business, a lot of you guys feel like you're not qualified enough, that you're not certified enough, that you don't have the right, um, you don't have enough experience. But the only way that you get more experience is by getting more clients. Like you have to get clients in order to get experience. That's the way this, this system works. That's the way that fr the framework works. That's how you test your knowledge and you get feedback. And I actually believe you'll get a, a significant amount more feedback by creating a base level knowledge and then testing out that base level knowledge on the clients that you have and being able to take them to the next step in their fitness journey. So that's number one is understanding that you're never actually going to be fucking ready ever. There's never going to be a point in time where you're 100% ready. You could go to school for, this is the funny part. You could go to school for seven fucking years, get a nutrition like diploma and you could still feel like you're a fraud. You could still feel like you're not ready. You could still feel like you're not qualified. So it has nothing 
to do with your certifications, your background. And that has absolutely nothing to do with your, um, your ability to help a client transform their life. So the first thing is understanding that you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. You need to start somewhere. Now let's come back to this feeling of like, okay, I don't want to be exposed as a fraud because let's do, let's do this for a second. Okay. Most of you online coaches, when you, when you're talking about building an online fitness business are getting to 10, you're like, I want to get to 10 K a month. I want to get to 5 K a month. And you're focusing on all these income goals, right? And because you're focusing on all these income goals, because you're focusing on all these things where you're like, I want to make more money. You forget that what you're actually doing is you're, you're actually helping people. That's the goal. One of my clients, um, her name's Amy. She's a fucking legend came on a hot seat with me and she's Amy's at between 35 to $50,000 per month. She came on a hot seat with me and I asked her, I'm like, what's one of the number one secrets to your coaching business? And this is what she said. She said, care more about the people than you do the money. So you're afraid of being exposed as a fraud. You have to understand that you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. So you have to get a couple clients. And once you get a couple clients, you need to understand that if you want your business to actually explode and you want to get to five, 10, $15,000, then you need to care more about the people than you do the money. So when you do get those two, three, four clients, instead of thinking like, oh, I need to sign 10 more to get to my 10K goal. No, you need to focus all of your energy, all of your intention and all of your effort on those two, three, four clients. And you need to deliver them the fucking service. that's going to change their life forever. That's what you need to do. You're so afraid of being exposed as a fraud that you spend all this time thinking about all these different things instead of just focusing on the people that are in your program. You want to know how, how to be a good coach? Fucking attention. Period. End of story. Attention. Pay attention to your fucking clients. It sounds so simple, but so many of us don't do it. The only attention you pay to your clients is when you send them a check-in form once a week. And when they don't respond to their check-in form, you're like, oops, your fault. No, it's not their fault. It's your fucking fault. You didn't hold them accountable. You don't have a system to hold them accountable. You're not sending them a message when they hit record low weigh-ins on their trainer eyes. You don't even message them when they hit their workouts. You don't message them when they don't hit their workouts. You're not holding them accountable. And so you're not fucking paying attention. And so because you're not paying attention, your clients aren't getting results. And because your clients aren't getting results, you feel like you're a fraud. But the reason you're, you feel like you're a fraud is because you're not paying attention to your clients. And so you have to start and you have to actually get a couple clients. And then when you get a couple of clients, you have to focus on those clients and get those clients amazing results with the knowledge that you have. Because what's going to happen? Your clients are going to progress. And when your clients progress, it's going to reaffirm to you that you actually do know what the fuck you're talking about, which is going to give you a lot more confidence to put yourself out there and get a couple more clients. Now you bring a couple more clients in, you focus on those clients. You're like, you guys are my babies. I'm going to help you transform your life. You get them results. What happens now? You've got five, six clients. Those clients are fucking crushing it because you're paying attention they start referring you friends. Now, instead of being exposed as a fraud, all these people are talking about how great of a coach you are because you're like paying attention to your clients. You care about your clients. That was the secret. Like I was like, I was afraid of being exposed as a fraud. And so I just focused so much of my energy on my clients and I did everything in my power to completely transform their life, almost from a place of fear at first. I'm like, if I don't do this, they're going to expose me. And then when I realized, I'm like, oh, I'm actually like, this is a really good way to operate my business is just to focus on these people so intensely that they get so much value that they just keep referring me friends. And that's how my business grew. And so starting out, like I didn't have all of the on paper certifications that a lot of these, these other people had in my area. Like a lot of these other people in my area, when I first started my coaching business were bodybuilding world champions or three time national champion bodybuilders. And so I'm competing against these people and on paper, they have a lot more shit than I do, but like in here, I just cared a lot more. I care more about the people than I do the, did the money. And as a result, the money started coming. People started coming to me. People started asking me questions. People started referring clients to me. People started tuning into my live streams because they could tell that I actually cared. This fear of being exposed never really goes away. You just learn how to work through it. You need to understand that that's a part of the process. And so you have to fucking start. You have to put yourself out there. You have to get a couple of clients in order to test your knowledge. And then once you get a couple of clients, you literally need to focus all of your energy and intention and effort on those clients to make sure that they get amazing results. And the third thing that I'm going to give you guys in order to really get over this fear of being exposed and to step into the coach that you're supposed to be is this. Write this fucking down. I talked about this in my Q&A this week. Never stop learning. Never stop learning ever. Never stop learning. 
Um, again, I'm going to use Amy Webb as a reference. We just did um, a hot seat in my mastermind. And Amy Webb, who is, uh, she stepped on stage, does, I think it's been seven, eight, nine times. I don't know if it's dozens, but it's at least seven, eight, nine times. Um, she's placed top three at nationals. Super smart girl. Always has a coach, a fitness coach because she's always trying to hire somebody smarter than her so that she can learn more information to give to her clients. Amy Webb also has a business coach. She hired me so that I can give her my knowledge and I can download my knowledge, my brains into her on how to serve her clients better so that she can serve her clients better and she can get her clients better results. Never stop learning. Like if you want to, if you want to be like, if you want to excel, if you want to grow, if you want to progress, you want to get over this fear of like being exposed as a fraud, like commit yourself to never ending growth. Because if you just commit yourself to never ending growth and you just get better every single fucking day, eventually you're going to look at your life and you'll be like, oh shit, I have 30 clients and I'm making $10,000 a month. And I didn't even realize that, like, I didn't even realize how fast it happened because you started, you fucking got your shit together and you just figured out that you're never going to be ready. You started, you got a couple of clients, you helped them transform their life. You're learning from different sources. You maybe you've got a mentor for fitness. You've got a mentor for business. And so people are downloading their knowledge to you. They're giving you their brains, which you can then pass on to your clients. That's how you grow. I never counted. Uh, I never counted myself out or counted myself that, that I never said to myself that I wasn't going to make it because I wasn't qualified or certified enough. In fact, I use that to my advantage. I'm like, because I'm not qualified enough, I'm going to learn more than all these mother truckers because I feel like I don't have the right certifications. I'm going to make sure that every single one of my clients that comes into my program feels my fucking energy. And that's how you do it. Never. And then, and then, and then I never stop learning. Like I always have a mentor, whether that be, and I've been, guys, I've been working out for like, like almost like 14 years now, I still hire fitness coaches. Still, my current fitness coaches are Amy and Brett because they are very smart, shameless plug. Um, I still have a mentor. Business coaching, same thing. I still have mentors that teach me. You guys view me as a mentor and I'm super grateful. I am also always learning so that I can have more knowledge to translate to you guys. That's it. That's the secret. So understanding that like this fear of being exposed never goes away, ever. And I think that like, the more that I progress in business, the more that I realize that like, I am the real fucking deal. Like it took me a while to actually look at myself in the mirror and say like, yo, you got this. Like you're fucking doing it. Like after getting 76 students to $10,000 a month, now I'm finally like, huh, like maybe I don't feel like a fraud anymore. And no matter how many students I got results, no matter how many people I was able to just like completely transform their business on some level, I always felt like, like maybe somebody's just going to come and just like knock on my door and just be like, you're a fraud right to my face. Like I always had that feeling like my neighbor was going to come and be like, you're a fraud. I know it. Right. I always had this like deep seated fear, but now it's almost like after years of working on myself, starting before I was ready, making sure my clients are getting fucking awesome results. And then always learning, like, finally I can look at myself in the mirror and say like, yo, like I know you're the shit. And it took me a long time to get there. Like a long time to get there. But understand, like if you're right now, if you're a fitness coach and you're feeling like you're about to get exposed as a fraud, start right fucking now with what you have, the knowledge that you have and translate it and download it into another human being. Give people value. That's number one. Number two, when you give people value, when you actually start downloading all your brains on a social media through live streams, posts, stories, uh, LinkedIn, TikTok, whatever platform you choose to use, there's going to be some people that reach out to you and want to pay you money for your service. When they do, literally completely transform their life. Do everything in your power to completely transform their life. Give them everything you have. You give, you give 100% on your social media, give 5,000% to your clients. Find another level and give it to those clients so that they transform their life. And number three, this is the third and most important part, is never stop learning. If you don't have a mentor right now, you're losing. And I'm not saying that you need, even need to hire me. Like, it doesn't matter. But if you're, in this, you're, if you're the smartest person in the conversation, you're in the wrong conversation. You need to get into conversations with people that challenge you. Get into conversations with people that will like question you. Get into conversations with people that will challenge you and cause you to think differently so that you don't stay locked into the same perspective. You need to grow. You need to evolve. You need to change. And those are my three ways that I believe are going to help you get over this fear of people coming on your doorstep and knocking and calling you a fraud.